welcome to Dreamspace TV, the Brainwave series, here in one Microsoft place in Dublin. I'm Amanda. And I'm Corey. In this series, we are going to be learning all about artificial intelligence, what it is, where it is, how it works, and most importantly, why we should be learning about it. So let's have a look at what we're going to be learning in this episode. By the end of this episode, you should be able to outline what artificial intelligence is and its history, distinguish between what AI can and cannot do, compare human intelligence with AI, explain how AI technology is used in our everyday life with examples, name three components of AI technology, explain what a data set is, outline how data can be collected and utilized by humans and or machines, organize and analyze a data set, and make predictions from a data set and communicate about them. So a lot to cover, but let's start from the start. What is AI, Amanda? Yeah, so AI or artificial intelligence basically refers to when a machine or a piece of technology is able to imitate some forms of human intelligence. And Corey, it's really changed and evolved a lot over the years. So before we go to how it works today, I think we should just take a step back in time and have a look at the history of AI. Yes. So we have a lovely timeline here. Because I love a timeline. Said, you do love a timeline. And um, we're going to start back in 1950, back with Alan Turing. People might have heard of him before. And basically, he proposed something called the Turing test. And it was to test a machine's capability um, in terms of intelligent behavior. Kind of cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And it was kind of groundbreaking at the time. Six years later, then, we have the first time that the term artificial intelligence was actually coined. Um, so that's when the name first came about back in 1956. When we went to the 60s then, yes. we have the ELISA program. This is, this is cool, this is fascinating. Yeah, and this was a computer-based psychotherapist. So, and it had natural language processing capabilities for the first time. So this was basically that we could engage with it naturally, like it was a human itself. Yeah. We actually tried this out. Yeah, we tried it out. And I suppose for this day and age, it wasn't so groundbreaking. But back then, I'd say this was like mind blowing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, now we've come on so much. But yeah. back then, this would have been unbelievable, yeah. I'd say. Um, and then three years later, we had Shaky, the first mobile robot that had AI capabilities. Um, and this is interesting because we ask students all the time what they think of when they think of AI. And a lot of the time they say robots, robots. Um, but, which is correct. And in Shaky's yeah. case, it was. But AI actually is across a lot of different technologies and machines now, exactly. like robots, which you'll learn about in the series. Then if we fast forward to the 90s, 1990, AI actually beat a world champion at chess in the global finals. And it was like all over the news because it was, it was groundbreaking in the terms of like gaming and AI. Yeah. And then we move forward even faster to 2005, so 15 years later. And this is where we see significant um, improvements with like deep learning and neural networks, which we will be covering throughout the series. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when we get to current day, then we're looking at, okay, what can AI do now? And when we compare to what humans can do, it is actually really advanced. It's yeah. really come on. And I think it's doing things that we never felt as humans it would be able to do. Um, so have a, let's have a look at these human skills. We have language, so speaking and listening. We have vision, we have learning, reasoning, and creativity. So these are all human skills, yeah. but now we know that AI technology can do them as well. So now would be a great time to pause have a look at this list of human skills and write down what AI technologies you know of that can actually complete these skills. So I'm sure you have lots of ideas for how AI can do these very human skills. Uh, we've had a little chat about it as well, haven't yeah. we? So you can be ticking it off the list as we go. Your examples might be our ones, they might be different ones, they might have very specific parts of something we say. So uh, let's see, anyway, we'll have a little yeah. chat about them. So we start with language first, Corey, so speaking and listening. Now I think of a voice assistant first and foremost. We use them all the time in our homes, with our phones. So we're talking to them, they're replying to us or they're doing different things for us. Yeah, I think so. Uh, like Kind of like a personal assistant we have all the time. And the other one we have are translation tools. Yeah, for we're sure. chatting about this. So being able to use them is really useful. Like if you're even on holidays, you can use them. And um, you know, you can say, oh, I need this to be said in <laughs> Spanish yeah. um, because I don't know Spanish or whatever it is. So that's utilizing AI all the time as well. And very useful. Very useful. 
Um, and then for vision, what did you think? Yeah, so for vision, the first thing I thought about was facial recognition. Like that's the first thing that came into my mind. But there's also things like object recognition. And I have an example of this, have a little demo. Um, so there is an app called Seeing AI, and it's actually for people who are visually impaired or blind. Okay. Um, and what we can do is it can read a room and it can actually identify objects in a room. So I'm going to test this out. I'm going to yes. use you, if that's OK. Gladly. I'm going to get you to hold a laptop and a yep. water bottle. OK, water and bottle I'm a human, so I know that's a laptop and a bottle. But let's see if the AI knows that that's a laptop and a okay. bottle. OK, are you ready? Am I smiling? <laughs> you can smile if you want. OK, so this is our big break. OK, yeah. here we go. And three, two, one. Processing a woman holding a laptop and a drink. Oh, oh, and a drink. And a drink. Very, very specific. Okay, that is very specific. That was more specific than me, to be honest. <laughs> That's really cool, though, isn't it? Yeah, I love Such that. Such an app we can use, and like you said, people who are visually impaired can use it. Yeah. And it can do lots of things as well. So it's using all those technologies, which is really interesting. Uh, the next one we had was learning. So again, I'd say people were thinking of this. I know it's definitely the first thing I was thinking of, because I was just thinking, like, how can technology... Um, learn things about me maybe and my behavior and um, so social media was the first thing I thought of uh, I was actually having a quick look there to see what types of ads um, were being promoted to me because obviously it's learning what I'm clicking into yeah your behavior and what you like yeah, yeah. this will be no surprise to you now when I clicked into it what I was getting were uh, sports clothes and uh, that was the first one because I am sporty and the second thing I was getting were runners <laughs> Because I'm obsessed and I'm always buying runners. Like I get yeah. caught all the time um, by that. So I get hooked in. So they yeah. know me well. They've learned that about me. I Those do services. like seeing what runners you're going to wear each day, though, to be honest. Because I'm like, oh, so, what runners has Amanda got on today? Keeps like, everyone guessing. That's great runner style. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it keeps everyone guessing, you know. Uh, streaming services as well. They're always yeah. learning about our behavior. But in terms of what you, what are you noticing in terms of your ads? I'm just intrigued. So my ads were all like... I love a bit of online shopping. <laughs> so my ads are all basically like all the shops that I shop for online. Um, and then a lot of public transport okay. kind of ads because sure, I'm their number one user. Yes. I think they're trying to push me to learn how to drive. Yeah, I think that would be great if Corey <laughs> could learn how to drive. Amanda's I'm been always, on my back about this for about 12 years. Because I'm always giving her lifts. Yeah. Anyways, okay, moving on. The next thing we had uh, was reasoning. Yes. Okay, so um, in terms of how it could reason, what did you think for that? So for reason, I kind of thought about, okay, how do computers like logically think about things? Because yeah. as humans, that's what we do. I think of navigation tools, because really there it's trying to identify like what is the quickest way to get to somewhere. Um, and like as humans, we'll go, that's 10 minutes, that's five minutes. I'm obviously going to go the five minute route. So that's exactly what navigation tools yeah, are doing. So if you learn how to drive, you can, <laughs> you can use that navigation I've never tool. used the driving part of a navigation tool. I'm always on the walking one. Go to get your steps in. Yeah, that's true. That's mm. true. Uh, scheduling tools as well. We find yes. this useful here in work because uh, sometimes we have to meet like 10 people. We need to find where's a room for 10 people? When are they free? And actually now we have technology that's able to say, this is a time that suits everyone. This is the room that's free. So it's very No, handy. it's great. When someone showed me that, I was like, why did I not know about this? Yeah, it's very useful. I was like putting in time in people's calendar and then like three days later still not being able to find a time that suits everyone. So that was ideal for me. Yeah, to, to use that one. Yeah. And so this brings us to creativity, Corey. Uh, and I think creativity is something that we thought maybe AI could never do. It's very, we would have thought very unique to humans. Yeah. Uh, and now we have generative AI that's available and it's able to do things that are maybe a little bit more creative. Yeah. We'll talk about generative AI actually in episode four. four. But specifically, we have examples like ChatGPT and DALI. And these are adding a little bit more creative flair to how AI works. Exactly. But before we go into anything like ChatGPT or DALI or those creative AI tools, I think we should test our creativity because okay. I think we're actually very creative. Sure. So I'm going to give you a task and then I want you to okay. give me a task because I want you to see how creative I am. Right. Go so on. your task is going to be to list the top five things to do in Ireland. Okay, so do list the top five things to do in Ireland. Okay. Yeah. So for someone who's never been before. Locking it in, I'll <laughs> give it a go. Right. Um, I am going to, okay, for you, I'm going to try and push you. Push your creative genius Go for a it. little bit. I know you like a challenge. I do. So um, I am going to ask you to write me a poem. Actually, I, 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 I'll be specific. Right. Write me a six line poem yeah. about dogs because you do love dogs. So I, could, I, think I could write a book about them. You could, you could. But I don't want, you, I don't want a book. No, that's, I just want a six line yeah. poem. I'll be very specific. That's the prompt. That's the six prompt. Lines. Yes. Okay. So while we're doing that, we think now will be a good time to put your creativity skills to the test. 
What we want you to do is write a question for the person you are sitting beside. Use verbs like create, write, draft, illustrate. Once your question is complete, swap this with your partner and start a five minute timer like Corey and I. Begin to answer the question as best you can. And when you're done, discuss your answer with each other before you come back and see how we got on. Okay, so I've opened up Bing Chat here, Corey, which has GPT-4 powering it, which is like the latest machine learning model uh, behind things like ChatGPT yeah. as well. So people might be really familiar with this. Now, before I put this in, this challenge you gave me, yes. which was to list the top five things to do in Ireland, I am going to call out my answers. Yeah, do. Because I don't want this to like taint my ideas. So I want to be like very much, this is what I came up with. Okay. So here we go. All right. Um, I, I don't know if people have done any of these things, and if you haven't, I recommend. Uh, right, so number one I had was to visit Kilmainham Jail. Yes. I'm a big fan. Huge fan. Yeah, so that was number one. The second one I had was to take a road trip on the Wild Atlantic Way. So take a road trip on the Wild Atlantic Way, because it's actually just stunning. I would love direction. to do that. I so, might get you to bring me. <laughs> yeah, well, you, unless you learn to drive, then you can bring me. Um, okay, number three. Try a traditional Irish meal, like an Irish stew. Right, okay. You know, you can't beat a hearty Irish stew, in you my can, opinion. You can. So that's number three. Uh, number four, take surf lessons in Clare or Sligo or Donegal. Okay. Because they all have amazing spots to go surfing in. I've tried a few times myself. I'm not the best, <laughs> but um, it's great fun and it's a stunning part of the country as well. And then number five, I have to make sure you sit in to a traditional Irish music session because I just think like you're in Ireland and um, the culture and the history and all the music we have is actually amazing. So they were my top They're five. actually really good. Oh, yeah, thank you. I feel like they were really different. Yeah. Do you well think done. so? Yeah, okay. I do. I think so. Okay. So are you ready? I'm going to type see. this in yeah. into okay. Bing Chat now. Okay. So uh, list the top five things to do in Ireland. That's what you said to me, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to submit that. And we'll let Bing Chat generate some answers. I'm intrigued. I want to see if there any overlap with me here. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Mm. I don't know. Let's see. So it's starting to talk to me. So there are some amazing things to do in Ireland. Um, and it's hard to pick just five. Oh, very <laughs> complimentary of Ireland it is. Uh, so here are the, some of the most popular and memorable ones. So the first one they have is visit the Cliffs of Mower. Yeah. Yeah. I think, in fairness, I tried to cover that off with... I've been twice. Yeah. Oh. There yeah, both go. in the winter. Yeah, very good. Very, very good. But lovely. Uh, the second one it's bringing up here is to explore the Wicklow Mountains National Park. It is a stunning yeah. part of the country, in fairness. Um, the third one is uh, experience the Skellig Michael. I actually have never done Skellig Michael. No, I've done the top I. two that they've listed already, but I have not done Skellig Michael. So let us know if you've been there. Uh, four is discover the Azaranka waterfall, a hidden gem in Donegal. I also have not done that. I haven't done that. So heard that's of that. that's a new one for me. So I actually, yeah, very interesting. And the last one, interesting. This is indulge in a seaweed bath, a traditional Irish spa treatment. <laughs> I've never heard of that. I've traditional never heard Irish of that. spa treatment. So <laughs> there you go. So that's interesting. So there are five. There was yeah. actually. No overlap, really. Well, no, Donegal, surfing, and then... We'll talk about that in a minute, maybe. Let's, yeah. let's compare this in a minute. Okay. But before we do that, I would love to hear <laughs> your poem. Okay. So this actually wasn't hard for me at all. This came straight from the heart. Okay. Like, it truly did. Okay. I love dogs so much. Here's my list here. I love dogs so much, it's hard to comprehend. When it comes to Valentine's Day, what I do is send... All the dogs in my life, a beautiful card, hoping that they will fall hard for me forever. <laughs> oh my God. That it's was like, from the heart. Actually, I'm about to shed a tear. It's actually a bit poetic. That is like, it's poetic. That is poetic. Isn't it? <laughs> like, I feel like that's, yeah, the time. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah, I, okay. I, I would find it hard that AI would beat that if I'm honest. And I know I'm biased because yeah. it's myself. Okay, so I'm putting in the prompt. So write me a six line poem about, about dogs. dogs. I'd be very surprised if this was from the heart. Let's see, enter. Oh, and actually look, while it's generating, you can see it's actually told me where to find the things it recommended. Oh. That's, there you go. That's kind of interesting, isn't it, as well? Okay, Corey, here's a six line poem about the dogs that I wrote for you. Do you want me to read it to you? Go on, read it to me. Okay. So, dogs are loyal, faithful, and true. Yeah. They love you no matter what you do. 
They wag your tail, they wag their tails and lick your face. They make your home a happy place. They are your friends and your protectors. They are the best of all companions. That's actually beautiful. <laughs> That's actually very nice as well, in fairness. Isn't That's it? very good. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what, what do we think though, in terms of like us and the AI, like the okay. outputs? The vibe I'm getting from it is, okay, for example, I think AI took poem quite literally. And yeah. it was like poem, rhyming words. Yeah. Whereas I took like a more poetic spin on mine. In your I, opinion. Yeah, in my, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, but I do think that is, it's a very good poem, to yeah. be fair, that AI said. But what I would say is, you'd find it in a greeting card and you'd find mine in a poem book on your bookshelf. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair enough. Um, yeah, like I would agree. I think for in both cases, yeah. it's given us very good suggestions. But yeah. I also think that maybe there's a little bit more like emotion, in even your, in my yeah. way, that sounds weird, but a list. But I think it's a very it, human thing where I was yours saying, like, is more music human. and yeah. food and stuff like that. But I think you could combine them both together because there's like merit in that, I feel. Yeah, definitely. Like you could say merge the answers mm -hmm. and yeah. then it would be even more powerful as an output. And I think that's the point when we're looking at it is we're not trying to replace the human. It's very much about working alongside it and saying, okay, let's put our creative flair with this and see what we can come up with. Can we make it even better? Yeah. So that's really interesting. So teachers feel free to try that out in your classrooms as well. Take some of the prompts that your students had, see what the AI generates and have a comparison around <coughs> what the output is from us as humans alongside what the AI outputs as well. So Amanda, what we done there was had a look at like one of the more advanced AI tools in this day. Um, and what we want you to get from this series is an understanding of what exactly is behind the AI technology. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what we're really trying to drive home here is that it's okay to know that AI is in things, but we really want you to be AI literate. We want you to fundamentally understand what's going on behind the AI, the components involved, so that you're making really informed decisions and choices about how you use it and how it uh, navigates things in your daily lives, ultimately. Exactly, and there's three components behind AI. There's data, there's algorithms, and there's machine learning. Now, these are very big areas in their own right, and throughout this episode and episode two and three, we'll be diving into these a little bit more, um, so you'll have the skills and understanding to see how these three things combined power AI. But let's start with data. Let's start with data. We're a big fan of data here yes. in DreamSpace. And ultimately what data is, is just statistics um, and facts that yeah. are kind of collected together. So it's just like lots of information. And um, often when those statistics and facts are collected together, they form things called data sets. Now we were very intrigued to understand how do data sets play a part yeah. in our everyday lives or in, in kind of companies and industries. And Corey, we are very lucky because we have a colleague here called Colin. Mm -hmm. Now by day, Colin is a site reliability engineer. Cool. And by night, <laughs> he is the manager of one of the women's national league football teams here in Ireland, which is really cool. And Colin spoke to us about the role that data plays in terms of informing decisions, seeing trends and patterns, and also helping them make predictions about cool. the game of football. So let's see what he had to say. So Colin, thanks for joining us on Dream Space TV, the Brainwave series. So in this episode specifically, we are looking at the role of data and how data works and the things it can do for us in our everyday lives. And we were having a conversation about, well, what has data got to do with sports? Data is everything to do with sports because data removes the need for your own little objective that you might have in your head. Yeah. So it gives you the clear guidelines on how your team has performed, but also it helps inform you as how you should play against a particular team because it can give you a report on their performance too. Okay, makes sense. Because I know we've said that's what data is. It's a collection of facts really and statistics on those things, that makes sense. But what data are you specifically collecting when it comes to sports? There'll be probably three main bits of data that we would look at and, and how we actually use it. So the first one would be doing our pre-match report. So it helps inform us on what our game plan should be for the day. Then once we've done our game plan and the game is over, there's two bits of data then that we pull from it. One is, has our game plan worked? Did we actually do the things that we wanted to do? And then the next part is, on the individual players themselves. How much load was put onto those players? How many kilometers did he cover? How many high-speed runs, deaccelerations that, they, that they've done? Because it all still 
when you're, when you're in, involved in sports, you want your athletes to be performing at the top level all the time. So to have them at the top level, we need that data to inform us as, are they going to get close to an injury? Are they being pushed to the edge? Have they got more left in the tank? Yeah. So yeah. they're the extra little bits of data that help inform us how we're actually doing. So do you have any examples that you can show us? I do. Let me show you something I've prepared. Okay, so we take, we're playing against Team A this coming weekend. And you go, you analyze the game, and you see what the normal formation is. But in the previous games, all the live data is put into a platform. And they use AI to tag each one of that data. And we can see where each one of those players make their main actions. Okay, okay very good. So what you might think from a formation is slightly different yeah. to what the data report is. So you take, example, the right back, the number two. In a normal formation, it would be in and around that position. But on real data collection, it shows she makes her actions really, really high. So that allows us to have a game plan saying, one, on the defending side of it, can we deal with her attacks? And on the other side of it, can we counteract that and get into wide areas down our left to get loads of crosses in? And there's a space there for you to kind of go there's into. extra spaces for us <laughs> to go. So that would all tie into then what our game plan and what we would do in training to go and attack this game. So as a manager, um, what skills do you use? Because there's so much data here. So what do you use to help form those decisions? Well, I need to be able to go and analyze all the data and then to be able to take out what's important for us, for the team, for the players, that there's no injuries and that they're fully prepared to be able to do what we require out of them on match day. Okay, brilliant, doesn't it? Love that. Could have talked for ages. Um, Colly, thank you so much for thank taking for the time to come in and join us and talk us through uh, the amazing world of data and sports. Thank you. Corey, that was so interesting. I could I have literally talked to Colin for hours, let alone a few minutes, because it was just fascinating to see how he's using data sets every single day, yeah. ultimately, to inform decisions, to show patterns and trends that they're seeing in training and in matches, and just in general to help him make predictions then about what they can do better. And it actually kind of made me think that as a human, it's so important to have those data analytic skills, because it goes across every single industry, like we see in sports there. And what I have here is a music data set from um, an audio streaming service. And it's a data set about the top 50 songs of 2021. Oh, interesting. Yes. That was a good year for music, if I it remember correctly. It actually was. I loved 2021. Yeah. Um, so I know. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to pop into the data set and have a look and see if I can make any predictions or see any trends myself. Okay, so I have the data set in front of me and as we can see, there's lots of different columns and rows and each column has a different name. So there's like track name, genre, popularity, danceability. I'm not going to go into all of them because there's so much. What I want to do is use this data set to like find trends and make predictions. And I'm going to use two different types of techniques. I'm going to use sorting and I'm going to use filtering. So I'm going to actually filter here by genre. So in the genre column, you can see that there's a little arrow. So I'm going to click on this arrow and there's a number of different things I could do. I can sort it A to Z or in alphabetical order. But I said I want to filter it. So at the moment, they're all selected. So all the genres are selected. I'm going to remove them all, so deselect them all. And I don't know, Amanda, I might go for like pop. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I might go for pop because that's my fave. So I want to see if any of my favorite artists are in there. I'm just a bit of a selfish here. Um, I'm going to apply that filter. Oh, <laughs> there's no artists that I would usually listen to in it, but that doesn't matter. They're still popular. They're in the top 50, um, but there's only two. Okay. Two pops, so that's interesting because I actually thought there would have been a lot more. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah, shows definitely. me there that, like, first of all, my assumptions are wrong, but it's cool because it's after giving me information, it's after telling me something I didn't know. Now, what I want to do next is I want to sort um, by popularity. But first of all, I want to remove the filter that I have on genre. So you can see here that there's like a little filtering tool that shows that there's a filter on that column. So I'm going to go in here um, and I'm going to either clear the filter or I can select them all. So I'll just clear the filter and that will bring back my data set that I had in the beginning. Now, when we go over to popularity, what we have to keep in mind here is it's the closest number to 100 here means it was the most popular song. Okay. Okay. So when I go into popularity, I'm going to click into that arrow again and I have an option to sort smallest to largest or largest to smallest. So I'm going to go largest to smallest because remember it's the bigger the number, 
the better the song, I suppose. So ours is the smallest, will give us the most popular song. And oh, it's actually, there's three most popular songs. Okay. So we have Good For You, Olivia Rodrigo. Babe, love that song. Very good. Um, and then we have Ed Sheeran, Bad Habits. Big year for Ed Sheeran 2021. Um, and then Doja Cat. So that's popularity. And as we go down, you can see the numbers get smaller and smaller. And if you wanted to find out what the least most popular song was, you could filter smallest to largest. Perfect. Um, and then just one more thing I want to know is when we go over to like danceability and energy, um, what you're looking for there is the closest to the number one. So 1 1.0 is the more energy the song will have, the more loudness the song will have, and so on. Great. So now that we know how to analyze a data set, it's your turn. So now is a good time to pause. Congratulations, you've been promoted to music producer. Your job is to analyze and draw basic conclusions from a music streaming data set. So first question you have to answer is, how is the data collected? Number two, what five conclusions can you make from the data set? Three, which techniques did you use to draw those conclusions? And finally, number four, which artist would sing your next big hit? Good luck. Well done, everyone. We would absolutely love to know what artist you would pick to sing your next big hit. So teachers or facilitators, uh, feel free to reach out to us at hashtag MSDreamSpace. Great stuff. So Corey, we're actually at the end of our episode now and we've covered a lot of ground. So let's take a recap over what we've covered. We've looked at what is AI. We've looked at the history of AI. So we went from its origin all the way to current day. And obviously within that, we saw some everyday examples of how we use it. And then we talked about the importance of actually taking a step back for us to understand what is behind AI. So the yep. different components, such as the data sets, the algorithms and machine learning. And obviously this episode was just focusing in on data sets. What is data? Where do we find it? And we saw some great examples there of how it's used in industry, in terms of sports industries and music industries. And we put our skills to the test with that as well. Now, when we talk about data sets, particularly in the area of AI, we know that alongside data sets, we have that other component of algorithms. And that will be our focus for episode two. So we really hope that you join us then. Until next time, bye. Bye. So a lot to cover, but Amanda, <laughs> Amanda, <laughs> every single online shop that I've ever shopped in. Sorry, okay. for, <laughs> it's not working. Creative elements to how, how uh, la, 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 la. and for you to pe put the, the, the. genres, popular. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> if we take a step back and actually look at what we've done. <laughs> the next big hit was going to be definitely what their artists might. Oh, why am I?